Again, good evening and welcome. My name is Christine Barrett, one of the Hall of Fame committee members. I am honored to stand up here before all of you this evening on behalf of the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee to celebrate some of the amazing Quincy High School student athletes and athletic teams that certainly deserve to be recognized. Before we begin this evening's festivities, I want to take the opportunity to introduce the 2024 Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame committee members. First, we have Carol Lynch, Quincy High School Hall of Fame inductee from, from 2020, excuse me. Unfortunately, Carol couldn't be here this evening, but we thank her for all of her involvement and dedication to the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame. We also have Nancy McDonald Crew, Quincy High School Hall of Fame inductee from 2012. Nancy, stand up and be recognized. <laughs> Michelle Miller Mulkern, Quincy High School Administrative Secretary, Quincy High School graduate and student athlete. Where are you, Michelle? All right, I thought you were at the bar. I was going to make sure you got back here. <laughs> we have Teresa Monroe Rashardi, Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame inductee. 2020. Thank you, Teresa. And we have Peter Swanson, Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame 2020 inductee as a Quincy High School basketball and tennis coach, as well as a retired Quincy High School teacher. At this time, I would also like to introduce and recognize a few Quincy High School coaches in the audience this evening. Both Quincy High School retirees and former coaches. First, we have Quincy High School head coach and future Hall of Famer, Jackie Niosi. Congratulations, Jackie, on another successful season at Quincy High School Volleyball. We also have head basketball coach, Sarah Conlin. Sarah's team went to the state tournament again this year. Congratulations on a league championship. Former head basketball coach at Quincy High School, Bob Noble, and also football coach, I'd be missed if I didn't say that. I'm not sure, but I think Tom Henderson may or may not be out in the audience tonight, but former head volleyball coach Tom Henderson as well. I would also like to introduce all of our former inductees to the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame that are here with us to celebrate. We couldn't have done it without you and we congratulate you on all your accomplishments and are glad that you're back here tonight to recognize our new inductees. So we ask that the 2012, 2020, and 2023 Hall of Fame inductees please stand up and be recognized. They're always all so shy, I don't know why. These are the best of the best right here. I'd also like to take a moment to introduce or, and thank a few people who couldn't be here this evening but have sent their congratulations to all of the inductees. Quincy High School Athletic Director Kevin Mahoney and Superintendent of the Quincy Public Schools Kevin Mulvey. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the mayor of this great city of Quincy, the Honorable Mayor Thomas P. Koch. Thank you, Christine. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, great to stop by and say hello. Sir, certainly, you want to offer my congratulations uh, to everybody involved, particularly uh, the committee that puts this together. This is a lot of work. Uh, and I know what's involved, so congratulations to all those who put this together. Most importantly though tonight, congratulations to all the duck inductees. Uh, it's remarkable, and I know as life moves on, you get together at these events and share great memories, and the, the various coaches, the teachers we had, and it, it turns into a beautiful evening of friendship and, and memories. And uh, you know, I'm a very fortunate, I had great parents. My, my father started the Coke Club, but he wasn't much of an athlete. My mother was a great athlete. Uh, and my mother was uh, excellent in softball and basketball and bowling. And, uh, and of course, she uh, contributed so much to youth girls, 
uh, softball programs in the city, uh, first actually in the city's history. So I'm very familiar with women's sports uh, and appreciate what it has done uh, for women, not only in the sport, but at what it does to help build self-esteem, confidence, uh, obviously discipline, team uh, sport brings back camaraderie and, and, uh, and all of that. So it's, it's important stuff. In fact, in today's schools, I think sports is as important as anything preparing our kids for life. I truly do. Um, so to all those former coaches out there, thank you for what you do. To all the inductees, especially Mel, congratulations, everybody. Have a great evening. I would now like to introduce invited guests in the audience this evening. First, we have Mr. Edward Smith, assistant principal of Quincy High School and former assistant girls volleyball coach. Mr. Smith, thank you for being here this evening. We're also very fortunate to have with us the principal of Quincy High School, Mr. Keith Ford. and former school committee member, former principal of Quincy High School, and Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame founder and 2012 committee member, Mr. Frank Santoro. We wouldn't be here this evening if it wasn't for Mr. Santoro, so could we have a nice round of applause for Mr. Santoro. I'm excited to celebrate this evening with all of you and your family, friends, and coaches. To give you a little background information, the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame held its first ever induction back in 2012. We learned a lot from that first induction, and we continue to learn and grow each year to improve and continue to recognize Quincy High School's amazing female athletes. Over the years and through this process, we realized we had overlooked some very deserving female athletes and may have actually done so again this evening. As a result, we are asking for your assistance as it's the goal of the Hall of Fame Committee to induct athletes until we can catch up to the 2000s. Some history and background information about some of our Hall of, Fam Hall of Famers. Did you ever hear of inductees Helen Catola La Camera and Mary Pratt? Two softball extraordinaires. Helen was a right-handed shortstop at Quincy High School, and Mary was our first ever Quincy High School softball coach. After Helen Catola graduated from Quincy High School in 1949, her coach, Mary Pratt, who had played in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, had arranged for her to try out for the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, and she tried out with 400 other girls. She was one of 40 chosen. When asked how she earned her way into the All-American Women's Professional Baseball League, she said, you learn the basics the right way from Mary Pratt. When asked about making it to the pros, she said she succeeded because, quote, I knew what to do in situations because of what I learned back in Quincy. In a 2010 interview, she was asked, as things, as things change for women's sports, the Title IX developments in the 70s and 80s and so forth. Were you following that or paying much attention to that? She stated, we didn't get acknowledged until a movie, A League of Their Own, came out. Mary Pratt and I used to say we were born too soon. Scholarships could have been in our future. When it comes to Mary Pratt, we could go on all evening talking about how she was so ahead of her time. An amazing athlete, and an even more amazing coach. She was the first ever softball coach at Quincy High School who took her 1970 team to an undefeated season. No matter what I say this evening, it won't do justice for her or what she's done for women's sports and women's sports in the city of Quincy. She is, as Tina Turner says, simply the best, better than all the rest. As an athlete, she could play any sport, southpaw pitcher, in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. Mary had been inducted into the New England Sports Museum, Boston University Hall of Fame, Boston Garden Hall of Fame, and the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Mary certainly is in a league of her own. We even had a 2020 inductee swimmer, Donna Marson, 
who was a valedictorian of Quincy High School in 1981, a captain, an all-scholastic swimmer, who went on to graduate from Harvard University Suffolk Law School and is now a seasoned attorney and partner at her firm. These are just a few athletes that have been inducted into our Hall of Fame. Then we have Quincy High School Volleyball. You will hear soon enough about the amazing accomplishments of the teams and individual players who weren't just all-stars and all-scholastics, but state champions. 82 state champs, 83 state finalists, 84 state champions, 85 state finalists, 86 state semifinalists, 87 state south sectional finalists. We lost to North Quincy that year. <laughs> I saw Rendell come in, but we're still not saying congratulations. <laughs> 88 state champs, 89 state finalists, 1990 state finalists. What an amazing run for that decade. Former economics teacher at Quincy High School, George Smith, had a banner made while I was in high school. It read, Quincy High School, where men are men and the women are volleyball champions. <laughs> How amazing Quincy High School women's athletic is, athletics is, and why we are so proud of so many of our current and former Quincy High School athletes and coaches. So to keep the tradition going, and to assist you as well as the committee, we've established a website for the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame, and we've placed little cards on your tables, and we hope that you have some time after this evening to check out the site and share the link with your former teammates, family, friends, and graduates of Quincy High School. I know that for some of our younger athletes in the room tonight, this evening, you may not realize how little women's sports were recognized over the years. So as a committee, we're trying to research such deserving athletes and inductees. We can't rely on newspapers as women's sports and women's athletics at Quincy High School were not always covered by the papers. We had to rely on yearbooks for information as well as all of you teammates, coaches, and friends. You are the ones that need to nominate those who are deserving of the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame in the future. So please continue to nominate deserving athletes as we try to close out this era of 1980 to 2000. At this time, I would also like to take the opportunity to thank those female athletes here tonight for paving the way for athletes like me and my teammates who will be honored this evening. We would never have had the opportunities at Quincy, as a Quincy High School athlete if it wasn't for all of you. Title IX and gender equity came because of you. Women's opportunities for competitive physical activity were limited back in the days. Early activities for women were considered recreational, non-competitive, and informal. In 1972, the passage of Title IX, which is an educational amendment, built a six-year period for all secondary and post-secondary schools to adhere to the compliance of creating equal opportunities for women in athletics. It has been a long battle, and just like the history of women's athletics, this Hall of Fame recognition is long overdue. Before we eat dinner, I ask that you please take a moment and bow your heads to reflect on those who are unable to be here with us this evening. We know that they are here in spirit, and are proud of each and every one of you who is being inducted this evening. Please bow your heads and remember those people at this time. Thank you. Once again, welcome Quincy High School alumni, families, friends, and classmates. We hope that you enjoy this special evening. We hope you have the opportunity to reminisce about Quincy High sports and all the great times you've had as a student athlete. We want this to be a memorable evening for you to catch up with teammates, coaches, and family here tonight at our fourth ever induction ceremony to the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you. At this time, we're going to begin the induction ceremony. If everyone could take their seats. Again, at this time, we're gonna begin our induction ceremony. Please note that inductees may choose to speak if you'd like. We ask that you keep your comments to two to three minutes and feel free to thank your family and teammates. At this time, I'd like to start with, with our first inductee.
It's an honor and privilege to posthumously present to you our first inductee of the evening. This inductee helped to pave the way for the future of women's athletics at Quincy High School. She was a multi-sport athlete participating in basketball, softball, and spring track. Yes, you heard me correctly. She played both softball and spring track. Two sports, both played in the same spring season. In addition, she played girls football, which some of you may not have known was a club sport at Quincy High in the late 60s and early 70s. This athlete was also a starter of the first ever Quincy High School softball team, which was established in 1970. Not surprisingly, she was the starting shortstop and she also played second base. She helped lead this first ever softball team at Quincy High School to an undefeated season at 8-0. Her team was inducted last year into our Hall of Fame for their groundbreaking season. She and teammate Patricia Thomas hit home runs over the fence at Faxon Field in their first ever game, which was against Braintree High School. In addition, she was a very successful member of the first ever 1971 girls track and field team. She threw the shot put, discus, and javelin and participated in the high jump and the long jump. She also won the state coaches meet with 214 points. This inductee graced the sports pages throughout the Quincy Sun in both softball and spring track and graduated in 1971. She continued to play softball and graduated from UMass Amherst. She was playing on a semi-pro softball team when her team won the championship, qualifying for the national tournament in Florida. Unfortunately, she passed away on June 30th, 1977, as a result of a motor vehicle accident on her way home from that championship softball game. She was just 24 years old. A true pioneer for women's sports at Quincy High School. I am honored to present to you posthumously Karen Marie Frizzetti, 1971 graduate of Quincy High School. At this time, I would like to welcome Karen's family who is in the audience this evening. Please stand. And accepting on Karen's behalf is her cousin and 1970 softball teammate, Gail Carella Callahan. I'm just gonna say a few things about Karen. I realized when I was thinking about this the other day that this was 54 years ago that we had that undefeated season. Nobody knew who we were. They didn't know we existed. They certainly didn't know we were undefeated. We made our own uniforms. Yes, the school did give us t-shirts. But <laughs> Mary Pratt bought us windbreakers at Bargain Center for a buck a piece. <laughs> so at least when we got off the bus, we looked like a semblance of a team. When we were inducted last year, we said, well, you know, what did you wear? We said, I don't know, shorts, the uniforms. Anybody remember the blue gym uniforms that people wore? Some of my teammates wore those. There's a picture up there with Lois McLean with hers on it. But when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about Karen. So we would leave school and Quincy High School, we'd walk across to the Y and we'd get a snack and a drink and then we would head off to practice, which was right in the corner. And um, Mary had an idea that when you practiced, you practiced like it was a game. There was no fooling around. You were, she was the Bill Belichick of her time. <laughs> so if you were fooling around, then you weren't playing. And she felt that you needed to play as hard, you needed to practice as hard as you play. So there were no scouts, none of that type of thing. And people did not know how good we were. And so a team would come 
and they would see us out there and we'd be practicing warming up and all that type of thing, having no idea that they were going to get creamed. Um, the closest that anybody came to us was 16 to four. So we just were good. And so they'd look and they'd see Karen out there at shortstop just whipping it across the mound and you know throwing out, having absolutely no idea of the power that she had. Now, I could catch anything in the outfield. I had no arm. But I could catch it, I could track it, I could catch it. But the beauty was, Karen was the shortstop, which meant she was my cutoff. Which meant that as soon as she saw me going to track the ball, she was already halfway out into left field, so that I could kind of like lob it to her, <laughs> type of thing. And at that point in time, she would turn around, and some poor sap would think that they were gonna score, and they'd be racing for home plate, and she would literally gun them down. Gun them down, and they'd be like, what? Where did this come from? But that was the power of Karen. The other thing is, the boys practiced behind us. So where our practice field was, and quite frankly, where our field was, the guys practiced directly behind us. And so when Karen was at practice, it was my job being in left field to say, guys, Karen's up. And they knew immediately that somebody had to turn around and look, because Karen inevitably would hit it out of the field every single practice. No, there was a routine to happen in a game, but in a practice especially, it was going over the fence every single time. We also had Mary as our coach, and she had a great belief that we needed to give back. And you know, here we were, finally having a team where they gave us t-shirts, and we had a team and we had a bus. It was very exciting. And so the idea that we needed to build people to start wanting to play softball was kind of like amazing to us, but okay. So we go to Kincaid was ours because we were out of Sterling. So we went to Kincaid. And fortunately, my boyfriend, my husband, had eight sisters. So that was helpful. <laughs> and they, five of them were able to play. And then their friends and their cousins. And so we would play. Now, if you know Kincaid, at that field, in the very back corner, before it was done beautifully over, in the very back corner, there was a, a pitching area that we were able to have play out of. And, at the end of practice, as a treat for the girls, this is the furthest point in Kincaid, Karen would turn around and she would hit. And the girls' job was to go, to the, go as far back where the wall was, and their job was to try to catch it before it went out onto the street. Because that's what she did. And that's truth. That's not a legend. That is just the power that she had. She was just absolutely amazing. The other thing about Karen, too, is that she had great support from her dad, Russ, and her mom, too, because unlike with me, with my daughter, my son, our parents didn't come to our game. So to have anybody there watching us was like, wow, we have a fan. This is great. And we were blessed always to have Russ come there as well. You know, I thought the other day, and I'll end this on this, is that Sometimes, at 71 years old, I can't remember why I walked into the room, but I can see Karen as clear as day from 54 years ago. I feel us walking down to the field. I, I see us walking into the Y, coming out, getting over there, getting ready to play, and it's like it was yesterday. So it's just, it's nice to be able to talk about Karen after all these years. Sandy and I push very hard for this. We much appreciate Christine and the rest of the committee for their willingness to listen to us because we did not have a lot of proof that all of these things happened. Uh, we were just very lucky that Mary Pratt, God bless her, made sure that something was in the paper for all of our games. And so that was our proof, that in our 54-year-old memories. Anyways, thank you very much. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Hall of Fame committee member and fellow Hall of Famer, Nancy McDonald Crew, to present our next inductee. Nancy. Thank you, Christine. Good evening and welcome. It's an absolute honor and pleasure to introduce to you our next inductee of the evening. A teammate of mine in soccer my sophomore year, basketball, and softball. This inductee truly defines 
being a team player, willing to play any position she was asked to play, and she embraced her role at all times within each team she played on. She came to practice every day with a smile on her face and ready to go. Never a single complaint. In speaking with the committee members, this inductee wanted the following programs recognized this evening. As these programs gave her opportunity to participate in sports at a very young age. This inductee lends credit to these programs for contributing to her future athletic career in junior high school and high school. On her behalf, we recognize the Coat Club, the Quincy Recreational Department, and CYO leagues for basketball and softball. Tonight, we honor and recognize a 1981 graduate, a multi-sport athlete participating in soccer, basketball, and softball, a three-year starter on the varsity soccer team, her senior year, the captain of the soccer team, a three-year basketball player, a member of the 1980-81 South Sectional semifinalist basketball team. An intricate part of the success of the basketball team coming off the bench as the sixth player, fulfilling whatever role she was asked. A very much needed teammate for the day-to-day -day practice scheme, role playing as the opposing team's center or strong forward, truly challenging her teammates that filled those starting positions, and helped prepare her teammates for the week-to-week -week schedule of basketball games that lay ahead. She's a three-year starter on the varsity softball team. She played multiple positions all three years of softball. She was a starting member of the 1980 softball team that were Suburban League champs, going 15 and one on the season. In 1980, she was selected to the first team Suburban League All-Star softball team. The 1980 softball team lost in the Eastern State Tournament in the semifinals. Her softball talents truly helped this 1980 team to its tournament berth and deep run to the semifinals. She was co-captain of the softball team her senior year. Senior year, she was again selected to the first team Suburban League All-Star softball team with a batting average of 410 playing third base. Back-to-back -back years selected as a Suburban League All-Star in softball. Not an easy task to receive these accolades if you understand what the powerhouse the Suburban League was during the 1980s within women's athletics. This feat truly speaks to her athletic ability and her individual success as a softball player. At this time, on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, I would like to extend congratulations and introduce you to 2024 inductee Nancy Slidinski. Wow, how do I follow that speech, huh? Good evening. Thank you to the Quincy Women's Athletic Hall of Fame for honoring athletes at ceremonies like tonight. Prior to attending Quincy High, I met Bill Russell at a basketball banquet, and I played horse with John Havlicek at camp. Both men told me, always be a good teammate, don't change. We must recognize our teammates who brought unique skills and stability to our team, as well as being the cornerstone of our own achievements. I admire a woman like Mary Pratt, who pioneered women's sports, and the youth programs made available in Quincy, the Coke Club, Quincy Recreation Department, and CYO Leagues. 
I want to thank coaches for taking time away from their personal lives and families for the betterment of women athletics. I pay tribute to my AAA coach, John McGinnis, who drafted three of the first four girls to play baseball in Quincy, and both Ron Martin and Dana Jones for establishing Quincy High girls soccer. Above all, I thank my parents, who were my greatest supporters. I am grateful to have been a part of advancing women's athletics. Thank you again for tonight. Being inducted with all of you is truly an honor. We have a long-standing tradition in our four induction ceremonies. We stand when we're honoring our inductees here at the Quincy High School Athletic Hall of Fame. So can we please stand for Nancy Schlesinski, 2024 Hall of Fame inductee. Thank you. This next inductee helped put Quincy High School Volleyball on the map. She's the most talented volleyball player of her time. As a sophomore in 1981, she was a starting varsity player on the Quincy High School Volleyball team, which was the first team to ever qualify for the Eastern Mass Volleyball Tournament. This team ended their bid in the South Sectional semifinals. That year, she garnered not only a selection to the Suburban League All-Star team, but was named to the Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic team. Again in 1982, as a junior, she led her team to not only a Suburban League title, a South Sectional title, but to Quincy High School's first ever state championship title, where she was not only a tri-captain, but she was a Suburban League All-Star, a Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic, and a 1982 Boston Globe All-Scholastic. By her senior year, she was captain again and led her team to an undefeated season where they were the 1983 Suburban League champions, South Sectional champions, but unfortunately lost in the state championship game. Her senior year, she captured Suburban League All-Star Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic, and Boston Globe All-Scholastic honors. In addition, she was named one of the top 10 volleyball players in the country, according to Volleyball Monthly magazine, which was the national volleyball magazine for those of you who may not know. In addition, she was selected as the 1983 Prep High School All-American, the only All-American to be named from Quincy High School Volleyball. A high school All-American, this 1984 graduate accepted a scholarship to the University of Rhode Island and played Atlantic 10 volleyball, where she continued to excel and receive many accolades, such as the Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Year. At this time, it is my honor and pleasure to induct Christine Gallery Callahan, 1984 graduate of Quincy High School, into the Hall of Fame. Unfortunately, Christine was unable to be here this evening, and on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, we honor and recognize Christine's athletics, athletic accomplishments. We extend our congratulations to her, and it is our pleasure to accept her award this evening on her behalf. When the Quincy High School volleyball team 
goes to the state championship match four times in a row from the fall of 1982 to the fall of 1985. It is truly an honor to be able to induct this next athlete, an unsung hero in the true sense as she was on the volleyball court with a high school All-American and a top 10 recruit in the country at the time. She started on teams that were stacked with future Globe All-Scholastics, Patriot Ledger All-Scholastics, League All-Stars, Players of the Year. However, she quietly did her job, a player that led by example with her drive, desire, and effort to want to succeed with the team. On behalf of the Hall of Fame Committee, I am honored to introduce an athlete who was an integral part of the success of the 1983 volleyball team that made a run at the state championship in the 1984 state championship volleyball team. A starting member as a middle blocker on the 1984 state championship team, coaches spoke of her excellent blocking ability and described her as a very scrappy and a tough as nails player defensively. She is a 1985 graduate participating in volleyball, a starting member of the varsity volleyball team in 1983 and 1984. A starting member of the 1983 volleyball team that were suburban league champs, south sectional champs, and were undefeated going into the state championship. The team lost in the state championship, which was their only loss of the season. A starting member of the 1984 varsity volleyball team that were suburban league champs, south sectional champs, and once again, the Quincy High School volleyball team were state champions in 1984. It has been an absolute pleasure researching and reading about this athlete whose, whose steady contributions to the volleyball team, both defensively and offensively, led to two consecutive state championship runs. There are numerous, numerous articles throughout the Quincy Sun praising this athlete's contribution. Just a few quotes from the Quincy Sun articles through 1983 and the 1984 season. Kathy McGregor played an outstanding net game blocking several Cambridge spike attempts. Last Friday, Quincy defeated Cambridge Ringe and Latin two sets to zero, with Sue Bevan and Christine Gallery leading the offense and Kathy McGregor sparking the defense. Quincy topped North Quincy two sets to zero. <laughs> All right. 15-1, 15-2. As Susan Bevan led the offense with Kathy McGregor. It's, a, it's clear through all of our research that she was an integral part of two extremely talented and successful volleyball teams. At this time, on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, I would like to extend congratulations and introduce you to 2024 inductee Kathy McGregor. Our next inductee of the evening is also a member of the 1984 state, state championship volleyball team, a starting member of the 1985 volleyball team that lost in the state championship match. 
She is a 1987 graduate, a multi-sport athlete, participating in volleyball, basketball, and softball. While participating in high school sports, she was also participating in club volleyball with the Mass Patriots Club Volleyball Program. As a sophomore, she was a member of the 1984 Varsity State Championship Volleyball Team, a starting member of the 1985 Varsity Volleyball Team that were Suburban League champs at 17 and zero, South sectional champs and suffered their only loss of the 1985 season in the state championship match. She was selected to the 1985 Suburban League All-Star Volleyball Team. She was selected to the 1985 South Sectional All-Tournament Volleyball Team. She was selected as a 1985 Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic in Volleyball. She was a starting member her senior year of the volleyball team until sidelined for the season with a stress fracture in her foot. A starting member of the varsity basketball team her sophomore year a co-captain and starting member of the varsity basketball team her junior year, a starting member of the varsity basketball team her senior year, selected to the 1987 Suburban League All-Star Basketball Team her senior year, a four-year starter on the varsity softball team, co-captain of the varsity softball team her junior and senior year, selected to the Suburban League All-Star Softball Team in 1987. Upon graduation from high school, this athlete went on to further her education and her volleyball career, attending Stonehill College. She was a three-year captain of the volleyball team at Stonehill, a four-time co-MVP with her twin sister, Ginny, at Stonehill College. Both her and her sister started and played every volleyball match all four years at Stonehill. She was selected to the Northeast 10 All-Conference team all four years of her college playing career. She garnered the Father William Gartland Women's Senior Athlete Award. She was inducted into the Stonehill College Athletic Hall of Fame in 1997. At this time, on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, I would like to extend congratulations and introduce you to 2024 inductee, Terry Duggan. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our next inductee of the evening, who helped once again lead the volleyball team on a state championship run, just in a different time frame. Not 1982, or 83, or 84, or 85. Her contributions as a volleyball player came as the high school volleyball team made another two-year back-to-back run at the state championship in 1988 and 1989. She is a 1990 graduate participating in volleyball, a member of the varsity volleyball team for four years, a starting member of the varsity volleyball team as a freshman, a starting member of the 1988 state championship volleyball team, selected as a captain her senior year of the varsity volleyball team, a starting member of the 1989 volleyball team that made another run at the state championship, losing in the state championship match. Described by the coaching staff as one of the team's most intense players, she was selected to the 1989 
Globe All-Scholastic Volleyball Team. She was selected to the 1989 Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic Volleyball Team. She played club volleyball, playing for the Mass Patriots Volleyball Club Elite Team. As a senior, this athlete was voted as the most athletic female by the 1990 senior class. This athlete went on to further her education and volleyball career at Suffolk University. It's been an absolute pleasure researching and reading about this athlete, whose steady contributions to the volleyball team, both defensively and offensively, once again led to two consecutive state championship runs. At this time, on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, I would like to extend congratulations and introduce you to 2024 inductee, Randy Gora. Thank you, thank you everybody so much. I am honored to be a part of Quincy High School's legacy. I found a quote today <laughs> to represent myself and I speak for most of my team because we're very small. It's not how big you are, it's how big you play. So with that, I wanna congratulate all the past, present, and our future women's athletes inducted into the Hall of Fame. Thank you. I'll do my best to not get emotional with the next few inductees, as well as with Randy, as they were my teammates. And I had the honor of graduating with them and spending more time with them in four years than probably my own family. But it was awesome, memorable, and truly an honor. This next recipient and I went to school from library school to senior year in high school although I did quit library school, sorry. <laughs> I told my mother I wasn't going. Her dad actually picked me up every day for school for all four years of high school. This next recipient was a multi-sport athlete participating in both volleyball and winter track. She participated in winter track in her freshman and sophomore years. She competed in the 300, was a high jumper, a hurdler, and a member of the 4x440 relay team. She was a two-year starter on the volleyball team. However, in her four-year career at Quincy High School, including all the teams she's played for, she only lost twice in her whole four years. At she quarterbacked our undefeated 1989 season to an old Colony League championship, a South Sectional championship, and state finalists. That year she was an old Colony League All-Star, a Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic, a Boston Herald All-Scholastic, and a Boston Globe All-Scholastic. In 1990, her senior year, she was a captain, a 1990 old Colony League All-Star, you get the point, the Patriot Ledger, all Scholastic, a Boston Herald All Scholastic, and a Boston Globe All Scholastic, leading the team to another undefeated season, Old Colony League champions, South Sectional champions, and state finalists. As I said, only losing two matches in her entire varsity career, and both of them were in the state finals to Case High School. I hate saying that. Ugh, oh, I am. This Quincy High School student athlete went on to further her education and continue her volleyball career at Bentley College, where she was a four year starter and a three time first team AVCA all regional performer. I know her parents are looking down on her right now, so proud of her, as she is the ultimate teammate and a true friend. I introduce to you. 1990 graduate of Quincy High School, 
and newest member to the 2024 Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame, Laurie Novak Best. <laughs> Thanks, Christine. <laughs> Thank you for the um, induction. The committee did a beautiful job. Congratulations to all the inductees this year. Um, I just want to thank all my teammates. There's no I in team. Um, we were lucky that we were part of the volleyball dynasty in the 80s. Thank you to Coach Henderson. He's not here tonight, but he was a big part of my volleyball career. Thank you to all my family and friends that came tonight. Thank you. I feel like it just got a lot brighter in here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I haven't been drinking, I swear. <laughs> this next student athlete was also a multi-sport athlete participating in volleyball and basketball as a four-year varsity member of both. A guard on the basketball team and a four-year starter and outside hitter on the volleyball team. With less than five losses in her varsity career, in volleyball. And as a sophomore, she helped lead the 1998 volleyball team to a league title, South Sectional title, and the 1988 state championship title. In her junior year, she helped lead the team to another league title, South Sectional title, and state finalist appearance. She was a league all-star as well. And in her senior year, she was also captain of the 1990 volleyball team where we repeated another winning season by capturing the Old Colony League title, South Sectional title, and state championship finalists. I don't know why I wrote this again, but we lost to Case High School in both our junior and senior years. But I wanted to tell you a little story uh, before the state finals. We had seven seniors on the volleyball team, and I think we all packed into Jen's car. We called it, I think it was Bessie, wasn't it? It was maroon. I'm not sure what kind of car it was again, Jen, but we had a lot of good times in that car. <laughs> well, either way, our parents had no idea, and I'm not sure even Hendy knew about this, but we all packed into the car and traveled to Swansea, Mass., which was where Case High School was located. We tried to uh, go see their match before we met them in the state finals. We got lost. <laughs> not surprised, Jen was driving. <laughs> We convinced her to do a U-turn on some lawn. We didn't know where the hell we were. The lawn ended up being the front lawn of the Swansea Police Station, where we all nearly died, and uh, we never made it to the game, and um, decided to head back home so we wouldn't have to explain anything to our parents. Sorry, sometimes I tend to go a little off track. Back to Jen. This athlete was a stellar performer her senior year. In 1990, she was an all-star, league all-star again, a Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic again. again. You guys get the theme of this, right? A Boston Globe All-Scholastic team member. And remember, I said she was a student athlete. She was the class president of the graduating class of 1991, salutatorian of the class of 1991, and went on to further her education and volleyball career at the University of Pennsylvania where she played volleyball for four years, earning her, let, her college letter in volleyball. I'm honored to introduce to you this evening, 2024 inductee to the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame and 1991 graduate and teammate of mine, Jennifer Richmond Terry.
I'm a woman of very few words, but I just wanted to thank Christine and the committee um, for honoring me and my teammates tonight. A lot of good memories. I've seen so many people that I haven't seen in a long time, and definitely um, a little bit of some bitter memories about those case matches. <laughs> that brings up a lot of anger, but <laughs> we had such a good team, and I've made lifelong friends, and just wanted to thank anyone, everyone. Thank you so much. I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. We actually won our junior year, and the officials made a bad call. Not going to lie. The ball hit the ceiling. We won by two. I swear to God. I can't even. Oh, I'm so angry. Why do I even say this stuff? I don't know. i got to be careful, because Melanie's coming up next, and she might take it out on me. I don't know. This next inductee was also a multi-sport athlete participating in volleyball, basketball, and softball while at Quincy High School. She was a starting member of the volleyball team, uh, excuse me, of the softball team her sophomore year. A hard-nosed center on the basketball team, I know that from the bruises I got from her, and a middle hitter for our volleyball team. Again, you didn't mess with this hard-nosed athlete because she was from Sterling. <laughs> she was strong, she was tough, and she was intense. I know you've already heard this, but she deserves every accolade she receives. And she helped us lead the volleyball team to the old Colony League title in both 1989 and 1990, as well as the South Sectional title in 1989 and 1990, and to the state finals in 1989 and 1990. She was captain her senior year, as well as an all Old Colony League All-Star in 1989 and 1990, a Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic in 1989 and 1990, a Boston Herald All-Scholastic in both 1989 and 1990. In addition, she was a 1990 Boston Globe All-Scholastic. This athlete went on to further her education and volleyball career at Central Connecticut, I am so proud and honored to introduce to you 1991 graduate of Quincy High School and newest member of the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame, Melanie Sullivan. I actually was really bad at basketball. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you to the committee for recognizing me with this honor and congratulations to the other inductees, especially Prendy. Um, congratulations to you and thank you for constantly yelling in my face to make me mentally tough. <laughs> uh, thank you to my awesome teammates. I want to thank my family members, my older sister, for telling me to play volleyball. Um, although she didn't tell me what I was getting myself into. So some of the things that I think about, like bonsai, still give me anxiety. Um, thank you to my aunt and uncle, and my dad and my stepmom. Thank you to my stepdad, and especially to my mom, for supporting me silently from the stands and sacrificing a lot so I could play Mass Patriots. God, I'm getting emotional, sorry. <laughs> and last but not least, I, I wish Hendy was here. I want to thank Hendy. Um, he pushed me and he encouraged me. And he made me a better volleyball player. And he helped me get recruited and play in college. Thank you all very much. Our next Hall of Fame inductee of the evening, who now resides in San Diego, California, unfortunately is unable to be with us this evening. It is an honor to introduce to you 2024 inductee, Amy Gelman. <laughs> Amy started her swimming career at a young age, participating in a U10 and younger swimming program here in Quincy. 
Now as an adult, she enjoys the ocean swimming and surfing in San Diego, California. Amy is a 1992 graduate, a multi-sport athlete participating in swimming, cross-country track, and spring track. Amy participated on the swim team for four years. She broke the school record for the breaststroke her freshman year. This record had been in place for eight years prior to Amy setting a new record her freshman year. She continued to break her own record in the breaststroke several times during her high school swimming career. Amy held the breaststroke record for several years upon graduation before a new record was set. Her senior year, she was the captain of the swim team. She was selected as a 1990 Boston Globe All-Scholastic in swimming. She was selected as a 1990 Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic in swimming. She was selected a 1992 Boston Globe All-Scholastic in swimming. She was selected as a 1992 Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic in swimming. On behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, we recognize and honor Amy Gelman athletic accomplishments. We extend our congratulations to Amy, and the committee is honored this evening at the request of Amy to accept her award on her behalf. A true three-sport athlete, actually four, participating in volleyball, basketball, softball, and spring track. She was a four-year volleyball team member, a four-year starter on the basketball team, as well as softball team. Sophomore year, she played both softball and spring track. While in spring track, she qualified for the state meet throwing the shot put. Her senior year of softball, she was captain and starting third baseman, but basketball was her forte. She was co-captain of the president's basketball team her junior and senior years. She was a three-time Old Colony League All-Star. Junior year, she was the second leading scorer in the Old Colony League. She was a two-time Old Colony League MVP, and she was the highest scorer in Quincy High School basketball history, scoring 1,132 points in her four years. A truly talented athlete and Hall of Famer, I am excited and honored to congratulate 1996 graduate Kerry Conley and welcome her to the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame. <laughs> Unfortunately, Kerry is unable to be here this evening and the Hall of Fame Committee congratulates her on this special accomplishment. It is my pleasure this evening to introduce to you our next Hall of Fame inductee. She was a multi-sport athlete participating in basketball for a year or two according to her, and primarily a cross country and spring, spring track star. I honestly don't think she knew how truly talented she was while in high school. Her performances seemed effortless, but they were amazing to those who watched her run. As a sophomore, she was an old Colony League All-Star in cross country and finished third in the Mass State Coaches Cross Country Meet. In addition, she won the mile at the Bay State Games that year, and that summer, she won the New England Junior Olympics in the 1500, 1500 excuse me. In spring track, she participated on the relay team that also qualified for the state meet. She was the only female to earn all states in cross country as an individual her junior year. She also recorded the best mile time in the Old Colony League. In 1995, she was co-captain of the cross country team, Old Colony League All-Star again in cross country, qualified for the state cross country meet again, and was MVP of cross country. She led Quincy High School to its only win over North Quincy High School during the tenure of Jeff Hennessy's coaching career and anyone who knows Jeff knows his coaching career is pretty unbelievable. She was given the ultimate compliment 
from this cross rival coach who coached her in the off season. According to track aficionado Jeff Hennessy, quote, she was the most talented distance runner I've ever coached. And he coached a lot of athletes in his career. Without further ado, and at this time, I would like to introduce to you Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame inductee and 1996 graduate of Quincy High School, Liz Swan Manning. to thank my family for coming here and all my best friends and um, m I'm a little shy about this I'm sorry <laughs> uh, Ben so on thank you for being my biggest fan <laughs> my nephew and um, I'd like to you know have my three daughters you know take part in this sport and be a strong female athlete someday and thank you <laughs> Our next inductee of the evening is a talented athlete across multiple sports. She's a 1998 graduate, a multi-sport athlete participating in volleyball, basketball, and spring track. She helped lead the Quincy High School volleyball team to three straight tournament appearances. In 1997, she was selected as a Boston Globe All-Scholastic in volleyball. In 1997, she was selected as a Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic in volleyball. In 1997, she was selected as a league all-star in volleyball. She was selected as the, as the team's most valuable player her senior year. She participated in the Bay State Games in volleyball for three years during high school. She was a captain of the volleyball team her senior year. She was a co-captain of the basketball team her senior year. She was selected to the Old Colony League all-star team for spring track her sophomore year. Her sophomore year, she qualified for the state track meet for spring track in the 800 meter race. She was selected as the most athletic female her senior year by the senior class. At this time, it is an absolute honor and pleasure on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee to extend congratulations and introduce you to 2024 inductee, Erin Barry. Thank you so much. Um, what a great honor and privilege to be here, part of this community here in Quincy. And more importantly, to be in a room with so many amazing friends, teammates, coaches, family leader role models, the list goes on. I wanna take a minute to recognize some of the most important people in my life, those who've truly provided me these opportunities, my mom and dad, see look at emotional soon. And my sisters, who motivated me and kept me in line. Um, I think most of us here tonight can attest that having these experiences with Quincy High Athletics has contributed immensely to who we are as people and our identities um, and the values we have as teammates out in the world. For me, being a part of QHS volleyball, basketball track, in no order of importance, I know it has truly provided me with patience, compassion, um, resiliency, and drive that I embrace every day as an adult. So again, congratulations to all of you tonight. I have so many great memories to cherish from this time of my life. And of course, a big thank you to our biggest supporters, our coaches, our families, our mentors. And I can only hope that my three daughters, Jess and Cassidy and Kendall, 
and my nephew, Kieran, here tonight, continue to see the value and passion and working hard and being a great teammate and friend. Thank you. It is my pleasure on behalf of the Hall of Fame Committee to introduce to you our next Hall of Fame inductee of the evening. She's a 1998 graduate, a four-year volleyball player. She was the recipient of the 1995 Best De Defensive Player Award. She was the recipient of the 1996 Best Defensive Player Award. She was selected as a 1996 Boston Herald All-Scholastic in Volleyball. She was selected as a 1996 Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic in Volleyball. She was the recipient of the 1996 Old Colony League Sportsmanship Award. She was selected as a 1997 Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic in Volleyball. She was the recipient of the 1997 Quincy Athlete Award. Her senior year, she was the co-captain of the volleyball team. This athlete went on to further her education at St. Anselm's College, where she was a student athlete. At this time, I'd like to extend on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, congratulations and introduce you to 2024 inductee, Mary Chenette. This next inductee is a natural three-sport athlete who played volleyball, basketball, and softball at Quincy High School. A four-year starter in softball, starting as a catcher as a freshman. She was a three-year starter in both basketball and volleyball. I had the pleasure of coaching her in her junior, volley junior year volleyball season, where she was the best offensive player, while her twin sister was the best defensive player. She was probably one of the strongest and most talented athletes I've coached. I remember in her junior season, we had to drive all the way to Worcester South for our first tournament game. It took over an hour and a half to get there, and the team we were playing was god awful. <laughs> Colleen got back to serve and started rattling off ace after ace after ace. I looked at her after Worcester's timeout and said, I'd like to go home. Can you please finish it? <laughs> she looked at me and said, me too, coach. And that she did. She served out the game, served them right off the court, and we got out of there before it was dark, which was apparently why we had to go there so early and play. She dominated the game. She was just that type of player. She was an old Colony League All-Star in basketball and volleyball. She kept telling me she was a basketball player. Sorry, Bob, I don't think she was. I know you coached her, but I, I told her she was gonna play volleyball. She was voted most athletic in her class. She was a Patriot Ledger All-Scholastic in softball, basketball, and volleyball. Again, she always told me she was a basketball player, but this three-sport athlete went on to play at Assumption College, and she played volleyball. A 2000 graduate of Quincy High School and the last player, so thank you for your patience to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this evening. I even hired her as a teacher. I think she did okay for herself. <laughs> it's an honor and privilege to introduce to you Colleen Nickel Clifford.
So I heard that it was like three to five minutes for everyone. Most people didn't talk, so I don't know. I, I got, what do I have, 20? Um, no, I, I kind of feel like a bum because everybody's team was like, you know, the state champs, the state this. From 2000 to 2004, we could only basically win a fight. We really couldn't win anything else. <laughs> Um, no, first of all, though, I do want to, um, obviously, I think we could probably still win the fights, too. Um, I want to thank my family, obviously, um, my husband, daughter, and son are here. I mean, they didn't, you know, get to witness the chaos that took place from 2000 to 2004, but I instilled some of that in them. Um, my parents, obviously, they were always there to support me, you know, and just instilled that hard work in me, and it was probably difficult to have to listen to me while I was playing sports, so, you know, I owe them a lot for always coming to everything, you know. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, and also, um, my brothers and my sister, I mean, my brothers just instilling, you know, the dedication. They played sports, too, and they just showed me, you know, what it meant to, you know, play a sport, show up, and give your all all the time, you know? And my sister, who is my twin sister, who should also be up here with me, but she said she was gonna uh, storm the stage. She hasn't done it yet. Um, but she was, uh, you know, most people are not, you know, they don't get to play with their siblings. We got to play together. We played every sport together, and she's the best teammate you could ever have. And she always, you know, had the, the you know, the low profile jobs, I mean, you know, most of the things I did, I got kills, rebounds, points, whatever. She did all like, you know, the dirty work, but hopefully she'll be in it next year. <laughs> um, and then also, obviously, I have to thank all my coaches. Um, Christine, obviously, you know, she, her and Tom Henderson were probably two of the best volleyball coaches you could ever have. Their knowledge, their determination, their hard work, like, doesn't matter, she'd kick a volleyball across the court at you, but you know, you knew you, you weren't gonna mess around. And like she said, she did hire me as a teacher. <laughs> so even after the chaos, you know, she still hired me. But you know, kids these days wouldn't last five minutes with them in double sessions, <laughs> so, honestly. Um, so I owe a lot to them. Um, and then also in basketball, you know, Coach Noble, I mean, he, he deserves a medal. <laughs> the, the, the crap that I gave this guy, honestly, like, he deserves a medal. <laughs> I, basketball was a sport that I, I mean, I loved it, and, you know, I gave my all for it, but I, you know, and he, you know, had a lot of patience and did a lot for me, so I appreciate you. And then also softball, you know, we were probably the worst softball team in Massachusetts. We may have won one game, uh, but we had so much fun, and that's kind of like the big thing about playing sports. You know, you want to have fun, but you also want to give, you know, your all, and that's what we did. And that's like what I'm so proud of is that I was always proud to represent Quincy High School and just, you know, give my all. And I'm so proud to represent Quincy High School. Like my daughter plays basketball now where the team wears red and black, but she wears blue and, she wears blue and white socks to her basketball games. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, I'm obviously now, I'm, you know, I'm very thankful for everyone that, you know, voted me in this. I was a little surprised because I, probably got the most technical fouls, <laughs> the most yellow cards, whatever. But, you know, that all just came from my love and, like, passion for the game. And, uh, you know, I am definitely was always proud to be a member of Quincy High School Sports, and I'm now just proud to be a member of the Hall of Fame. So thank you to everyone. <laughs> Colleen's not shy, is she? <laughs> I will say, um, Bob, Bob, she nailed it because you, you were a saint. <laughs> I was a little different, I think, but you were a saint. And this brings us to our next inductee. I could go a lot of ways with this, too. This is kind of funny. Our special recognition this evening goes to a coach, 
The words volleyball and Prendy are somewhat synonymous. She was the assistant girls volleyball coach in 1980, 1981, 1982, and 1983. I swear I didn't know half this stuff and I've known Prendy forever. She was the assistant girls basketball coach in 1982 and 1983. She was head coach, head coach, she was always an assistant. I don't know where that came from. Head coach of the girls winter track team 1983 to 84. And I should also mention she was the head boys volleyball coach at Quincy High School in 1989. She was co-founder, coach, club director of Mass Juniors and the Mass Patriots volleyball program and continued to run the program from its inception in 1981 through 2020. So I'd say she's a lifer when it comes to volleyball. She was an educator in the Quincy Public Schools for as long as I can remember. Payback. I had the pleasure of being her boss as well. <laughs> she pretty much did everything you could imagine for the Southwest Quincy community while at Sterling Middle School. She coached middle school volleyball at Central from 83 to 89 and at Sterling from 1989 to 2020. She even ran volleyball for a short time at the Quincy Recreation Department. When reading her resume, it says she was the U.S. Volleyball Association New England Region Sportswoman of the Year in 1975. Prendy, I was two, seriously? In 1996, she was inducted into the Northeast Agenda Women's Athletic Hall of Fame. In 2010, she was chosen for the American Legion Americanism Medal. And in 2011, the Massachusetts American Legion Educator of the Year. And now she's a ref, certified through the National Federation of High School Sports. Geez, Prendy, when you wore that referee shirt when I was in high school and blew the whistle every time I tried to set the ball and called the carry, you really weren't a ref? Jesus. The only coach I know who loved Hospital Hill, Bonsai, and any pit drill more than Whitey and Hendy. Some of those things were crazy. Truly, truly, Prendy. You did so much for so many of us that are in the room tonight. <laughs> Truly a dedicated volleyball coach in Quincy. And don't think we don't know you snuck over to help North Quincy High School as well. I see Jim Rendell back there. But honestly, we can't thank you enough for your dedication and commitment to volleyball in the city of Quincy. And at this time, it's an honor to present to you Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame 2024 Special Recognition Inductee, Coach Chris Prendeville. Thank you, Christine and the committee for this wonderful honor. My greatest cheerleader was obviously my mother, who I uh, had 65 wonderful years with. And most of you know that uh, parents are number one in your lives. I had two other women who also greatly influenced my life. The first was Mary Jean Thompson, my coach for volleyball, basketball, and track. I did not run, I threw javelin. <laughs> and that was a girl's Latin, not Quincy High, sorry. I lived in Dorchester. Um, she got me absolutely to love volleyball, and she's probably why I majored in health and phys ed. She was a total drill sergeant and ran a class of 75 girls with absolute control. She could take attendance in less than two minutes. It was scary. <laughs> I was more afraid of her than my parents. First time I had an alcoholic beverage, drinking age was 18, was the day I got out of high school. She scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <sighs> my 50th reunion is this year. Um, anyway, the second was Mary Catherine Yanoni, who many of you know. She took me under her wing and gave me opportunities for growth as a teacher and leader. 
She's the one I called when, when I was offered the choice to go to Sterling versus staying at Central and waiting for an opening to teach there. That was kind of scary. That worked out pretty well, though, and uh, lots of good years at Sterling before I retired. And then several of us had bonded by our Camp Wing work. You all remember Camp Wing, some of you? Uh, when, so we visited Mary Catherine after her retirement regularly. That would be Hendy, Jen Fay, Holly Rendell. Um, there was a bunch of us that went. And she would still be mentoring. She would tell, share our accomplishments. She'd be telling us what we needed to do with, you know, as we kept going forward. She was just amazing. And I had the greatest honor, probably one of my greatest honors in my life was to officiate at her burial when she passed away. She, both of these women will never be forgotten. I came to Quincy in 1978, graduating Girls Latin in Bridgewater, and uh, started coaching here in 1980. I came within one day of getting the head coaching job at North Quincy High for volleyball. God had other plans, I guess, and that worked out, and they offered me the assistant at Quincy, and it, boy, gave me no motivation to beat North. Oh, I was <laughs> so mad at them. I thoroughly enjoyed working with Ray Whitehouse, Tom Henderson, Jim Rendell, Chris Barrett, Christine Barrett, and Jackie Niosi. For those of you in the early 80s, there are plenty of you here, yes, we kicked your butts, no question. We had four-hour practices. It was insane. Uh, basically, my, my own college practices weren't a cakewalk, so, so you sort of got payback from that. So practices were divided into one, four hours. One hour of conditioning, Hospital Hill, 440s and stairs, remember those? Anybody having flashbacks yet? <laughs> one hour of defensive drills, one hour of serve receive, a half hour of serving, and a half hour of hitting. That was practice, and your parents let us do it to you. <laughs> That's amazing. So if you're here as a family member of one of these inductees, they weren't exaggerating. Quincy High volleyball players were the elite athletes in the school. I do believe you are in far better shape than any of the football players of your time. <laughs> Matches were easy compared to practice. You were all physically and mentally as determined as they come. Quincy went in just a few years to qualifying for states and then winning them because of your mental toughness and willingness to work to achieve our team goals. Eye of the Tiger was definitely appropriate. I left Quincy High officially from volleyball so I could focus on mass pats, but I seemed to be in the gym a lot anyway. So many of you were able to travel far and wide playing teams across the country and again using those experiences to, make, to become stronger players. When society focuses on win-loss records, I couldn't begin to figure out any of those numbers. I like the championships, don't get me wrong, but I'm so much prouder of the colleges so many of you were able to get into, thanks to volleyball helping to open the door, in some cases helping with your costs. Your work ethic helped you to achieve so many things and become wonderful, young, can I say young anymore? We're getting old. <laughs> Women, successful in your different walks of life and families. I'm so very proud of all of you. And that's what makes coaching such a positive experience and one I'll never forget. I'd like to congratulate the 82 and 84 teams here, as well as others like Nancy McDonald from the earlier years and several of the in uh, inductees from the later years. You have so much to be proud of. Quincy High Volleyball is a legacy. And it's great to see former players coming back and giving back to keep that legacy going. Jackie, Mary Beth, and Tricia, thank you for the time and the lives you're changing now. Thank you to the parents of the many players here. You trusted us even when I'm sure they, some came home swearing and crying from practices. I want to thank once again the committee and my friends who are here who have put up with me talking about volleyball for years. <laughs> I don't know how many times they wanted to do something and got the answer, sorry, got volleyball. I am so honored to be a part of this Women's Hall of Fame. Thank you. It's truly an honor and quite frankly humbling to be given this opportunity to do these last two inductions of the evening. In June of 2023, when we came back to the table to recap the 2023 induction, we briefly spoke about where are we headed for 2024. One thing we agreed on were these last two inductions. And at that point, the research began. When the decision was made a few weeks back by the committee that I would do these last two inductions, the first thought that came to my mind is, where do I begin? 
Do I begin with the 13 athletes that these two teams produced that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame? Do I begin with the three coaches who have been inducted into this Hall of Fame? Do I begin with the steady stream of global scholastics that these two teams have produced, or the coaches of the year, or the players of the year, the steady stream of Patriot Ledger All Scholastics, Herald All Scholastics, League All Stars, a high school All American who was, one, who was one of the top 10 recruits in the country at the time? Where do I begin? How do I organize this immense level of success the Quincy High School girls volleyball team had? So I started at the ground floor of the 1980s era. <clears throat> to give everyone an idea where this program started and where it was four very short years later. Three state championship runs and two titles. The fall of 1980, Coach Whitehouse is in his third year as the head volleyball coach. Little did we know in two very short years he would be the Boston Globe Coach of the Year for the 1982 team. <laughs> assistant coach Chris Prenderville in her first year as the assistant coach in 1980. We have just heard about her accomplishments and dedication and contributions to the volleyball world. The team finishes the 1980 fall season. Don't cringe, folks. At four wins and eight losses. And two very short years later, the fall of 1982, the volleyball team is a Division I state champions. So, how exactly did this happen? Well, the summer of 1981, after a rough 1980 season, 23 players from the Quincy High School volleyball program attended a week-long volleyball camp at the University of Rhode Island. They get back to Quincy, insert preseason workouts. However, the running of Hospital Hill had not yet started. <laughs> we left those workouts for the state championship teams. The fall of 1981, the volleyball team goes 11 and three on the season. And for the first time in the history of the volleyball program, the team qualifies for the Eastern Mass Tournament, seated at number 11 losing in the South Sectional semifinals to the number one seed, Boston Latin. Coach Ray Whitehouse is interviewed by local newspapers and states after the loss. Next year, we won't stop at the semis. Whitehouse, who was assisted by Chris Prenderville, told his disappointed players. The summer of 1982, back to the drawing board. The players stayed the course, committed to winning a state championship. 26 of them attended a week-long overnight volleyball camp at the University of Rhode Island. They returned to Quincy. Preseason workouts now consisted of running Hospital Hill, to be more specific. The 1982 state championship team developed into a team that consisted of a future high school All-American and a top 10 recruit in the country. They claimed the Boston Globe Coach of the Year title the team produced three Boston Globe All-Scholastics, several Patriot Ledger All-Scholastics, League All-Stars. They were a combination of current and future Globe All-Scholastics. Little did they know at the time, their hard work and dedication would also lead to the team being inducted into the Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame. As I close out the induction for the 1982 state championship team, I purposely left out any storytelling about the 1982 season, as I believe that is what this podium is for. And for the 1982 team to share with us the tale of a season that leads to a state championship. At this time, I am honored on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee to extend Congratulations to and introduce you to the 1982 State Championship Volleyball Team. Coach Ray Whitehouse, Assistant Coach Chris Prendeville, Barbara Fain, Teresa Monroe, Janet Potama, 
Ellen Deedy, Susan Bevan, Christine Gallery, Carolyn Leonard, Susan Dehan, Cindy Morrill, Pauline Dunn, Karen Monell. Come on up, girls. Absolutely, I knew you would. <laughs> 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 Nancy, are we supposed to do okay. Yeah, absolutely. Get Colleen Dunn said okay. she wants the microphone too. Uh, that was a joke. <laughs> Hello. I'm Carolyn Leonard. None of us prepared a speech because we just thought we'd be inducted and we'd move on. Chippa! Chippa! <laughs> what I will tell you is this is the hardest sport I ever played. I'm a basketball player. I started playing volleyball, because my sister did, who was a Hall of Famer last year. She said, you gotta play, you gotta play. So I did. Then I was like, why am I playing this? I'm running up Hospital Hill. I can barely walk up, let alone run. Um, I had fabulous friends that, uh, to this day, we have such fun, fun memories. But it was grueling, and when we won the championship, my father said to me before the game, here's a dime. Your mother and I can't make the game, but call us and let us know the results. <laughs> so I had this dime in my coat. So we get to wherever we went, I forget where it was, somewhere in Quincy, and I'm like, where's the pay phone? <laughs> I'm calling my father. Yeah, we won. I mean, they couldn't do it because, you know, we had our younger brother with special needs, so they couldn't make it. And, but all they ever cared about when I got home at night was, how was the team? Did you win? How did the team play? It was never about me. It was always our team. And that is how I've been brought up. So thank you, Mom. Thank you, Dad. And thank my fabulous teammates. We had so much fun. So the story continues with the Quincy High School girls volleyball team and what a remarkable story it is. We all know it's not easy to get to the state championship, and it's even harder to win it. It is now the summer of 1983. The groundwork has been laid, or I guess you could even call it a template. And it is clear what it takes to make a run at the state championship. Develop a junior high volleyball program that has been going on in the background for several years feeding the high school. Encourage the players to go to volleyball camp during the summer and develop their skills. Constantly tweaking the preseason workouts so the athletes are ready to go when they walk in the gym. It, appear, it appears to be a pretty darn good template. During the fall of 1983, the volleyball team makes another run at the state championship, losing in the state championship match back to the drawing board and that template, the summer of 1984. Summer volleyball camp, preseason workouts, a returning team the fall of 1984 that consists of Globe All Scholastics, Patriot Ledger All Scholastics, League All Stars, a coach who was honored in 1982 as a coach of the year, an assistant coach who would go on in 1988 and 1990 to be the coach of the year. Two future Globe All Scholastic Players of the Year are on this team. Three future Globe All Scholastics are on this team. Future Patriot Ledger All Scholastics. Future League All Stars. This team is an abundance of talent and they did not let themselves or their fans down. They stayed the course and the Quincy High School Girls 1984 volleyball team goes on once again to capture the Division I state championship. And in this journey, the team also captures the Boston Globe Coach of the Year again and the Boston Globe Player of the Year. The accolades that run across this team from the coaching staff to the players is a remarkable feat. As I close out the induction for the 1984 state championship team, what I will say again is this story does not end here for the girls' volleyball team. It's just for another night. 
Once again, I purposely left out stories telling about the 1984 season, as again, I believe that is what this podium is for, and for the 1984 team to share with us the tale of a season that leads to a state championship. At this time, I am honored on behalf of the Women's Athletic Hall of Fame Committee to extend congratulations to and introduce you to the 1984 state championship volleyball team. Coach Ray Whitehouse, Assistant Coach Tom Henderson, Kathy McGregor, Terry McLaughlin, Karen Monell, Colleen Dunn, Beth Benito, Leanne Dondero, Ginny Duggan, Terry Duggan, Lauren Standring, Pam Austin, Marlo Lavangi, Sue Perry, Stacy Nigro. All right, hello. Well, I just want to say thank you on behalf of our team. Um, this team was, I mean, it was just amazing. Um, we were, Terry, get over here. <laughs> Conley, get over here. So we had an amazing team with uh, Prendy and um, White House and uh, Henderson. The coaches were just amazing. But it was that 82 team that won the championship. And going into it, Terry, we lost to somebody. <clears throat> Who did we lose to? And then Brockton. And I'll never forget, so Prendy had left that year, and it was like we had five graduating seniors, and all of a sudden we were like kind of slacking, we were coming off the loss, and it was, it was awful. So White House said, all right, in the office. So all of a sudden we're all sitting there like, all right, it's not, you know, we're used to winning and stuff, but he said, okay, we can do this one or two ways. We can coast through the season, or we can kick butt, everybody commits to it, let's go. By a show of hands, who wants to do this? So we have five graduating seniors, so of course we all raised our hands. It was end line, and it was amazing. After that, it was just, you know, the sense of camaraderie in the family, and I mean, it, it was just something I'll never forget, and it really shaped it helped shape my life, and I know everybody else on the team, because you never saw, and we had something called Yabba Dabba Defense, because we were all basically five foot nothing, right? Except Kathy McGregor, hello. <laughs> so we were the scrappiest team out there, but it was just amazing. Everybody was in it, and that was real true team spirit, and can't thank the coaches enough and the teammates. It was awesome. So it was Yabba Dabba defense, basically. Let's have a nice round of applause for all of our inductees this evening and our state championship volleyball teams. In closing, I want to take the opportunity to thank several people for making this evening possible. First of all, the Hall of Fame Committee, former Quincy High School Principal Frank Santoro for making this Hall of Fame come to fruition, Superintendent Secretary Laura Owens for assisting us in creating the programs for this evening's event, Scott Campbell for donating the t-shirts for tonight's inductees and all of our special donors such as friends, Quincy High School friends Bob McPherson, the Ricciotti family, and all of those who placed ads in our programs, the Terrell Room, and lastly, the inductees for their contributions to Quincy High School athletics and women's sports. At this time, we ask all of the inductees this evening to come up as we're gonna do some pictures up here before you go. Have a safe evening, and we hope to see you at our next Quincy High School Women's Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Stay safe and have a great night. And again, if inductees could come up here, that would be great. Thank you very much.